OpenAI just released O3, which is the smartest model that they've ever come out with. However, it is also hallucinating more than previous models. Now, if you're familiar with large language models, then you know that hallucinations are interwoven into the DNA of generative AI. However, there are ways to mitigate, if not eliminate, hallucinations. I use a seven-step system to help avoid hallucinations in my research. I'm going to walk you through the seven steps, and then I'm going to show you an example so that you can follow the same system and eliminate hallucinations in your research as well. I'm also going to share this PDF with you so that you can use the templates in this PDF to speed up the process to help you mitigate AI hallucinations. Step one is about creating the perfect research prompt. A lot of times, many people don't know how to ask ChatGPT correctly to get the best results for the research. I created a template prompt that you could paste right into ChatGPT. Take the following research question and rewrite it to create a clearer, more detailed and structured prompt that will get the most accurate and thorough result possible. When rewriting, make sure to ask for a detailed explanation, list specific areas or topics to cover if applicable, request only real, verifiable facts, principles, cases, or examples, instruct that if the answer depends on facts or varies by situation, it should be explained clearly rather than assuming a definitive answer. If any part of the response is based upon assumptions, unverifiable information, or possible hallucinations, it must be clearly labeled as such. And then this is where you would put your original question. So everything in blue here, what you would be doing is you're going to take it, you're going to copy this, you're going to paste it in the ChatGPT, and the only thing you're going to add is your original prompt on the research request that you want to have. And then you let ChatGPT do its thing. Now what's going to happen is that ChatGPT is going to come back with an improved prompt. Copy the prompt, refresh with a new query on ChatGPT, and then run the research based on the upgraded version of your question. ChatGPT is going to do the research, give you the answer. Now, now step three, we're going to go to at least one other competitor LLM and run the exact same prompt. Now, typically, I go to at least two competitors. In the example that I'm going to share, I'm just going to go with one to just keep it simple. The competitor that I'm going to work with is Claude. Now, once I have my response from Claude, I now have ChatGPT's response. I have Claude's response. Step four, cross-compare the responses to identify conflicts and gaps. I have another template. This is what you would copy and put right into ChatGPT. I will provide you with answers from another LLM to the same research question. Review the responses and compare them to your own. Identify and explain any conflicting information, inconsistencies, or potential hallucinations. Provide a clear explanation for each difference you find. Conclude with a summarized table highlighting key points of agreement, disagreement, and areas needing further verification. Here is the other LLM's response. And then press enter. Now ChatGPT is going to do its thing. It's going to review Claude's answer. It's going to compare it to its answer. And it's going to offer that summarized table highlighting the key points of agreement, disagreement, and areas needing further verification. Step five, I want to summarize and verify potential hallucinations. This is where you'll use this template. Based on the comparison of the responses from the multiple LLMs, perform a hallucination check for each potential hallucination or unverifiable claim. 
identify the specific hallucination or claim, name the LLMs that produced it, suggest a trusted source database or method to verify the information. If a direct source cannot be provided, recommend a research method or where verification should be attempted. Present your findings in a table with the following columns, potential hallucination or claim, LLM responsible, verification method, trusted source, and additional notes. Now at this point, you'll have it nicely summarized, nicely broken out so that we can get to step six, refine and correct your original research report. We'll use this template using the results from the hallucination comparison across the LLMs, review your original research response, identify every area where potential hallucination, unverifiable claim, or inconsistency was found, rewrite your original research report to correct, remove, or clearly label each of these issues. So now what I'm asking ChatGPT to do is to rewrite it based upon what it's learned to eliminate its hallucinations that it may have discovered. Provide a short explanation of what was changed, why it was changed, to make it easy for the user to understand, clearly distinguish between corrections where wrong information was replaced with accurate information, removals where unverifiable claims were deleted, labels where uncertainty must remain but is now properly disclosed. Present the final output in two parts, the revised report, fully corrected and labeled, and a change log table showing original issue, hallucination, what was done, corrected, removed, or labeled, short reason for the action taken. And again, these blue areas, you would just copy this and put this template into ChatGPT and let it do its work. Once that's done, you'll get the revised report, you'll get the change log table, and then lastly, we get to step seven. We have the final report. The hallucinations are now far less, but it's still not gonna be perfect. So this is where human involvement is necessary. You want to independently verify everything, double check all the citations, check the sources, make sure it's accurate. And by doing that, you'll have a hallucination free report. And I'm going to share this PDF with you. But before I do that, let me show you a step by step example of this process. Not every task is going to be littered with hallucinations. Certain tasks, you don't have to worry at all. Like for instance, email editing or brainstorming for creativity. Now, unfortunately, the tasks that we want it to be hallucination free for are the ones that typically have a lot of hallucinations. If we go down the list, summarization, coding, general Q&A, now we're getting into a more moderate level of hallucinations, anywhere between 10 and 30%. And then, of course, the ones that we really want to make sure are hallucination-free, academic research, any kind of research for that matter, legal advice, medical advice, those are all high hallucination risks. So for our example, I'm going to prompt some legal research considering that there's a high chance of hallucinations. Now let's go through an example together. Step one, create the best prompt that we can create to get the best research response. So what I am going to do is I'm just going to highlight all the blue here, all the purplish blue, copy that and bring that over to ChatGPT, paste it. You don't have to, you don't have to change anything the only thing you need to do is put the original question or request that you're going to have. So this would have been the original research prompt you would have requested from ChatGPT, but we've already set up the prompt to make it even better for you. So I'm gonna replace this with, can you get sued for using a meme online? Explain the legal risks. Press enter, and there is step one. 
All right, now you can see that it's far more detailed, provide a detailed structured explanation addressing the legal risks of using memes online, specifically copyright law, trademark issues, defamation and policy, real world cases, jurisdictional differences, risk factors, clear disclaimers, and no hallucinations. This is certainly going to test the hallucination process. So I'm just going to highlight the actual prompt itself. Copy that. You could control C or hit the copy button right there. Now we're going to go to a new chat. So I go over to the new chat icon, start fresh, paste it, and then press enter. That's step two. As ChatGPT is doing the research and in writing the report, we're going to go to step three. Now, step three is to go to a competitor large language model and ask the same exact prompt. So I already have saved that prompt. I'm putting it into Claude. In this case, I'm going to Claude. Now, typically, I'll go to at least two competitors. Just show you how this works. I'm going to just stick to one competitor. Same exact prompt. And then let Claude go to work as well. Once they're done, we'll move on to step four. Have them cross compare all responses. And as you see here, we have a template for that as well. I'm going to go down to Claude and press copy. Paste it into ChatGPT. So I now have Claude's information in ChatGPT. I'm going to copy the template of what I'm going to put into ChatGPT. Bring it over to ChatGPT. Put that in front of what I just put in there for Claude. And just to show you what this says, I will provide you with answers from another LLM. And now in this case, I'm going to change the parentheses to Claude. So the same research question. Review the responses and compare to your own. Identify and explain any conflicting information, inconsistencies, or potential hallucinations. With a clear explanation, conclude with a summarized table highlighting key points. Agreements, disagreements, area needing further verification. Here is the other LLM's response. This is Claude's response. Press enter. Going to go back up to ChatGPT's response. I'm going to highlight everything that ChatGPT gave me. I'm going to go over to Claude, paste it into Claude, and I do like how Claude just, instead of pasting it in, just puts it as an attachment. Go back to our template. Put that in there. I will provide you with answers from another LLM. This time I'm going to put ChatGPT. To the same research question. Review the responses. We got all that. Here's the LLM's response. Boom. Press enter. And now Claude is going to do the same thing that ChatGPT is doing. All right, so that's step four. Now, as you can see, ChatGPT is doing the comparison of Claude's response, my response, offering analysis if they agree, if there are inconsistencies, going through each different category one by one, and then creating the summary table at the bottom. Go to Claude, same thing. As you can see, part of the reason why I do like using Claude is that it is aesthetically pleasing, the way it organizes. And, and notice that Claude is already admitting the most significant issue appears to be with my cited legal cases, which differ from those in the document and may not be accurate as presented. This is going to allow the user to review the information more easily.
But we want to summarize that one more time, make it even easier to determine where these hallucinations are. That brings us to step five, and this basically is where we're going to create a hallucination summary table. Based on the comparison of the responses, this time from Claude, perform a hallucination check for each potential hallucination or unverifiable claim. Identify the specific hallucination, which LLM produced it, suggest a trusted source, database, or method uh, to verify the information. Suggest a trusted source, database, or method to verify the information. If the direct source cannot be provided, recommend a research method or where verification should be attempted. It's going to create that summary for us. We'll let ChatGPT do its thing. Now we're just going to do the same in Claude. Now we can compare the hallucination check table. And as you can see here, ChatGPT has found a bunch of hallucinations in Claude. Then on the Claude side, notice how Claude has discovered some ChatGPT hallucinations. So as you can see, this is very useful to have more than one large language model checking the work. More large language models that you do this with the greater the chance you're going to catch most of the hallucinations, if not all of them. Now, as part of step five, one of the things that you, as the user performing the research needs to do, you need to check all of these. You got to start there. You got to clean it up. And once you've checked them all, you can request ChatGPT or whichever large language model you're working with to make the adjustments to the research report. Once you have all of the adjustments in that you want changed, you can go to step six, which essentially is asking to create that final report. So you would just copy that, paste that in using the results from the hallucination comparison Review the original research response. Identify every area with a potential hallucination. Unverifiable claim or inconsistency was found. Rewrite your original re research report to correct, remove, or clearly label each of the issues. A change log table showing original issue, hallucinations, what was done, corrected, short reason for the action taken. That's just a copy-paste. And now it's going to go to work. Do the same here with Claude. We're now in step seven. And, and this is that last check. You're checking the work. You're independently verifying. This is where human involvement is so important. You're double checking all citations. You're making the final edits. And now you have a product that has mitigated hallucinations, could be hallucination free depending on the amount of time that you put into it. Now that the large language models are all having this deep research function, you could perform the same system now with deep research, which is going to even do a better job at mitigating hallucinations. So there you have it. Seven simple steps to mitigate, if not eliminate, hallucinations in your research. Give it a try.